Recently, we had a profit of £87.70. And as you can see, by judging by Sally's spectacular spreadsheet, we've had a really, really good run. A little bit of a hiccup here at minus 163.50, but we don't talk about that. And I've got a feeling today might not actually go that well. Welcome your faces back to episode number 67 of the series Profit or Loss. I buy faulty electronic items on eBay, attempt to repair them on video and sell them for a profit, hopefully. I'm not messing about today because I'm out here for war. We are going to win in this video is what I keep telling myself, but um, is that realistic? Probably not, probably not. I have it with me, another faulty PlayStation 5. I'm loving the PlayStation 5s at the moment. It's actually one of the only things that I'm able to purchase on eBay that is faulty, hence why you're probably seeing a few of them, but it's really good to get the practice in. Condition-wise, we have a little bit of a scuff mark up here around the console, not too shabby. As you can see, we got a label here that says no power, but all in all, looking pretty good. I paid, are you ready for this? I paid a total of 100 and 10 pounds for this PlayStation 5. 110 pounds, that is in fact the best price I've ever bought a PlayStation 5 for on eBay. It's digital edition, not disc. The eBay listing states strictly faulty for parts, console only, no controller, no power. This is the big part, warranty seals void. This console has been worked on, not by us, in brackets. So I would definitely say that I'm actually quite excited to get inside this and see what mess somebody has maybe left it in. Maybe not. It might be absolutely fine. But judging by that description and how cheap the console is, I'm going to say this might have been a mistake. First thing is first, you know exactly what we're going to do. Plug in the power supply. I had a little bit of a crackle there, you know, and we're just going to see what happens when we go to power the console on. Any beeps? Anything like that? Nothing at all. Absolutely nada. Believe it or not, that's actually a very, very good start. Let's crack this open and see what lies beneath. Okay, um, a few scratches where the lid has been ripped off previously. The Obviously, the warranty sticker is gone. We have the fan connector. Comes off nice and easily enough. Now, I'm noticing already one, two screws missing here. But that's it so far. There's only the two screws missing. Not horrendous. Okay, something's going on with this screw here. Maybe is it the wrong one they've put in? Is it the wrong screw? Yes, it is. That is the wrong screw there. That is also the wrong screw. I don't know what damage that would have done, but that's quite long. This should be one of the shorter ones. That's the one they had in versus this is the one that should go in that place. Fan itself is quite dusty and the grill down there is also rather dusty. Imagine there was some miracle that we got an SSD with this console. No. First inspection is, oh wow, <laughs> we are missing so many of the silver screws, which makes my job easier in terms of taking it apart. But that definitely concerns me a little bit you know one of the things i actually really look out for almost straight away on these boards now is whether uart has been done and it doesn't look like we have any solder connections here that's good okay what are we about to see -eth? any signs of flux or anything like that on this board doesn't look like it from what i can see a few scratches on the pcb up here on the copper clamp looks like it's been put back okay a little bit loose if i'm honest i think they may have even looked down here because some of this viscous paste is missing it doesn't look like they physically scraped it off i mean to be honest with you again uh i can't see with the naked eye but i could be completely wrong you might be screaming at the camera right now i can't see any flux residue or anything like that especially around the big chips so around the south bridge or around the SSD controller I see up here. I'm going to put this back and then we're going to test that for voltages and see if we got a 12 volt short or something. But just initial inspection, we're looking all right. Let's plug in the power cable. Understandably, because it was so cheap, I keep telling myself that my expectations to fix this are very, very low. So anything is a bonus. And worst case scenario, this is a great board for just donor parts. Or we might be able to sell it again, faulty for 150, 160. We'll see. Okay, so multimetre, do your magic. Do we have 12 volts? Looks like we do. Hold on. There it is. We've got 12 volts coming into the board. That is good news. Means our power supply is supposedly okay. Do we have 5 volts? Oh, okay. All right. It teased me a little bit there. I thought we only had 2. Yeah, we have 5 volts. Do we have 3.3? We do have 3.3. Okay. So we've got, we've got 12, 5, 3.3. Interesting. Okay. I have to be honest. This is looking relatively promising. So far, let's uh, let's unplug the power here. Let's take this board out and see what the situation is on at the back. Over to the microscope. Now, it might be one of those where we're just going to have to prod around a little bit and try and locate our short. I'm just checking over here. That This area looks really burnt out, hey? You can see where it stained the board a little bit. And we seem to have, what's that? On that coil. A little bit of gobbledygook. Okay. Just, uh, just inspecting. Just inspecting. See if we can uh, see anything fishy. Probably going to look around our, our main. Ooh. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, it's disc. It's, it's disc. It doesn't have these fuses. But nonetheless, it almost looks a little bit fluxy here. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I was completely wrong. So the Southbridge has been changed. 
I just couldn't see it with my bare eyes. What about the SSD controller I see? Has that been changed? No, it doesn't look like it, does it? That looks factory. Let's just uh, move this up. See if we can get inside the SSD controller. Yeah, that looks fine. The South Bridge, however, cometh here, my friend. I mean, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I can't lie. That looks, um, that looks bald, if you ask me. Well, those solder balls are making a great connection. You can see here as well, look. Yeah, really, really nice. Is there a possibility there's a little bit too much flux under that IC, though? That's what I'm thinking. Does it need a little bit of a reflow and perhaps a spray to get all that flux out? As a wise man once told me, aka okay, Toltec Merc is that man. I don't know if this is what he's talking about, which is the clock capacitor or something along those lines. Well, the crystal, the crystal, I think. It won't operate properly if there's flux underneath the Southbridge IC. I don't know about you, but it does look a little bit fluxy under there. Apparently, it messes with the connection or whatnot. That's, uh, that's Joey's technical terms. And I would say gladly and happily that whoever done this is more than competent because that was a really clean installation of the south bridge but what i'm gonna do is just check for any shorts that we might have that would tell us we're gonna have a bit of an issue here this is directly underneath the south bridge ic all looking good so far the actual south bridge ic they put on might also be faulty don't seem to have any obvious shorts in the area. Just confirm a couple more places. I would say you can see from my multimeter, but I forgot to uh, put it on the screen. So you should be able to see now. Fairly normal readings in all the uh, all the right places. I've not got any voltage going to it. This is simply just continuity mode, seeing if we've got any obvious shorts. And I know this is, again, pretty probably going to sound pretty weird. I am just going to check on a few random locations just to see if there's anything else going on. Because maybe the South Bridge is fine. And it might be a little deterrent. Don't be blindsided. Check around this area here. How many ohms do we get? 80, yeah, fairly normal. Okay, no shorts there. What about just here? No, all good, okay. Just checking inside the ports as well. The ports look clean. Just check the rest of the board. Can't really see anything going on, if I'm honest. Again, does that dialog look like, I see look like it's had to flux around. I didn't, I didn't think I just checked here. Little solder ball there. No, we're okay. All right. I think what we're going to do is reflow the good old South Bridge and then give it a nice clean out underneath. Just want to make sure that everything's making a connection that needs to be making a connection underneath there. Okay. 460 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 99% to take care of this situation that we've got here. I've got the fume extractor on as well. I've got my can of air and my isopropyl alcohol next to me also after the reflow to get all of that flux out. First, I do just want to kind of see it sit a little bit. Should we give it a little poke? Still nothing yet. What about now? Nope. Needs to get the board hot as well, equally. Try to give it a little poke now. Nope. There we go. Okay. Definitely popping back into place where it needs to. That's fine. I'm not going to do anything just yet because the board's going to be boiling, but I'll give it a nice clean. All right. Now after a decent clean, maybe a little bit more down here. How's it looking? We looking any better than what we were? Yeah, it does look like it, doesn't it? Like this side. Yeah. And this side, I think that's where we had like a big blob of the, the flux. Yeah, it looks so much better. Uh, I don't necessarily believe this is going to work, but it's always worth a try. Try the simple things first, which is something that I recently didn't do with just swapping out a simple power supply. I instead replaced eight MOSFETs on the power rail. Okay, now and probably only now on this occasion, it'll be super stupid of me to reassemble this board. Usually I would, but I don't think that's probably going to fix it. So let's see what happens when we go to push the power button. Anything changed? If we get lights here, I'm about to jump for joy. In three, in two, in one. We get a beep. Okay, that, that, I mean, that's new. That's good. It doesn't actually power on though. Oh, wait, I've just noticed something. Look at the state of this cable. That's, uh, that's ripped in half where they've put the, the screw in. So I'm not going to get LEDs. Nevertheless, I don't think it's turning on because I'm getting the constant beep. But what I might be able to do now is hook UART up and get something from the South Bridge. When it was completely dead before, I don't think UART was actually going to tell us anything. But now that we're getting a little bit of a beep, there is some power going to the board. That should hopefully write an error code to the South Bridge. And when we hook up UART, we'll be able to get that error code and see exactly what's at fault. Maybe it is still the South Bridge, but this is good. This is a step further in that process. All right, so I have news. This is the error code that we are getting from UART and it is the only one that shows up. There's no error code one, two, three, or four. This is literally when I do error code zero. And it says DDR6 5 
damaged, replacement required. So it's a ram stick. It's one of these. Now, I don't know the order which these goes in. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think this one is the one having the issue, but I'm just going to check that information. I think after checking Toltec Merck's video, I think I, I am right in saying that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I think this is number five. Also confirming what type of ram this is. Does that say Samsung? I think that says Samsung. Yeah, Samsung. So I don't actually have any RAM off the board that is Samsung. So I found a donor here, which this has already been replaced. So I'm going to take this off and hopefully the chip itself is okay. And then we're going to need to reball this one and put it onto the other board. So I will walk you through that process. This one had a lot of flux underneath it by the looks of it. Flux at the ready. Braid is the secondary step. This already has leaded on. So I don't need to worry about mixing it. And now we wick. Take all of that leaded off. There we go. Come in with a cotton swab now and just give this a nice clean. This part's very satisfying. Now, it may look like I've picked the only bit of RAM with a dull pad. Because why wouldn't that be the case? Just down here. Should be okay. Here we go. I won't be surprised if this doesn't work, by the way. Maybe we have other faults at hand. Okay, here we go. So we're just placing the stencil on top now. This is BJ180. There it goes. Drop in there. Come in with our mechanic solder paste here. That should do it. We're going to go 350 degrees Celsius. Airflow speed 99% from far away. That one didn't go well at all, so we go again. Attempt number two. I'm doing this vertically now for a better grip. I think that's how I used to do it. Here we go. Second attempt. Wish me luck. Might be okay. No, definitely not. How did I used to do this? 390 degrees Celsius airflow speed. 99%. Okay. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I... I don't know what's going on here, to be honest. That being said, I've decided to go for a manual reball. Tried a few times now, it's just not happening. So we're going to drop a little bit of flux on this. Just enough for the stickiness of the balls that we go with. Thin layer. I think these are going to be like a 0 0.5 sort of situation. I'm just going to try these 0 0.4s. Yeah, 0 0.4 too small. Could we even maybe get away with a 0 0.6? Uh, 0 0.6 might be the one. No, I think it's going to be a bit too big. I don't have 0 0.5. I'm going to have to go 0 0.4, I think. 0 0.5 would have been perfect, but I think these are just going to have to do. I need to save my game now, so I need to take this off and just flow all of this before I lose all my progress. 1% airflow, nozzle off, 390 degrees Celsius. I lied nozzle on because of the angle underneath the microscope. Okay, now we're coming with the flux. Hopefully, don't mess this up. Magic. Okay, sweet. One side down, and those balls look okay. Now we just need to do this side. That obviously took a lot longer than uh, than I expected it would, but something like this, I really need to make sure is done properly. So it's worth the reboot process. It's never been an issue for me with RAM before. Here we go. Hopefully those balls are going to be big enough. We'll see. Let's put this on the board. Whilst the board is hot, we're going to apply some more flux. Come in with our soldering iron. And just add some leaded to that. Looks like we had maybe a couple of oxidized pads under here. And now just glide our wick over the board. Not really pushing down here. I'm using the wick to push the iron back and forth essentially. That's the best way I can describe it. There we go. And now because the board is hot, we should just be able to wipe away this flux with a cotton swab. No IPA, not just yet. I think we have maybe one little blob down here and a tiny bit up here. So again, just to be safe, a little bit of flux. Do it nice or do it twice. Now I'm just heating this flux up again to make it a little bit easier. There we go. That looks all ready. We're going to go with a little bit of flux. I just use a cotton swab to take a lot of it away because I put a lot on there. 
There we go, that's enough. Now we can see we have the arrow up here. Put the ram stick on. And just line it up. Seems to be in the right place to me. I'm just checking the other ram sticks for reference. They're all in the square there. This one could maybe go over a little bit. Or is it okay? No, these ones all look in the square. Whereas this one is a little bit out. There we go. 460 degrees Celsius airflow speed is in fact 70%. There we go. That should be sat down now. Yeah, it is. And now we come in with the flux. And now we go for the reflow. And you can see the chip is now sat down or sitting down in the process of. Can we get a little bounce? There it is. Now I'm not going to do it straight away, but whilst the board is hot again, we need to just clear up all the flux that we can. There'll be a lot of flux under the IC, so I'm going to flush this out in a second as well, like I did the south bridge. Exactly the same process. And hopefully we've done a good enough job. And like I said, I really hope those solder balls are okay. So that's the one that I've just replaced. You can see all those solder balls are touching. And if we look at the one next to it, yeah, those balls are a little bit bigger. I mean, that is a little bit closer to the camera. But should be okay. Should be okay. Nervous moment for me because that took me a long time to reball that ramp. Do you know what? It's, it's very therapeutic. If I had 0.45 or 0.5 balls, it would have been perfect. Let's just check the other ram. This is the ram that came off the board. And to be honest, look, I mean, it just looks oxidized. Can you see up here? We have all of these pads, which are just really, really oxidized. I think even maybe a reflow would have helped this situation. I might also be speaking way too early here, but yeah, and down here even, look, it was a little bit oxidized. Let's give this a nerve wracking test. I am just stealing another ribbon cable for the uh, for the LEDs off a donor board. Momentous of truth. Have we made a fantastic profit with this PS5? Or have I done all of that for no reason and broke it even further? Perhaps in a three, in two, in one. Okay, blue light, come on. It was so close. It was so close. Let's try again. Okay, so we get one beep and then we turn it on. We get a blue light. Okay. So it's beep on, beep off. And what is that? Probably about one second. Two, two slash three seconds of blue light, I'd say. I think the sensible thing to do here, it might even be like another bit of RAM. But what I'm going to do is hook up UART, clear the error log history, and then just go through a boot sequence and see if I get a different error. It might even be pointing to a different RAM stick. Close, but no cigar. This is the error code that's populating through the UART error codes. And, um, and it's exactly the same. DDR6, five damaged replacement required and i've ran the whole boot sequence again and it is constantly showing up just that one error my issue now is that i don't know whether it's the one that i've put on the board which i doubt if i'm honest or it's potentially a just a different ram stick so i'm not sure whether to replace the one that i just did i have no idea this sounds really silly but what i am going to do is just put some of my own fucks under the south bridge and just give it one more flush just in case it's reporting something incorrectly because i don't know if that is fully clean under there you know right let's come in with our flux here and properly flush this out, whatever's underneath. Worst case scenario, I might need to just have, have to replace it. There we go, you see that flux is now going underneath the IC, it's sucking it up. Okay, it's definitely moving, let's flush it. Okay, how do we look now? Yeah, again, all right? Yeah, fine, relatively clean. So I actually need to start recording from here as well, because like I said, this one is for a video, but it's like part of a video. During the course of the live stream, I opted to change the RAM not once, but I think it was two or three times throughout the whole thing. Eventually, I decided to swap it for RAM on a known working board just to completely rule out the issue of bad RAM. And unfortunately, I still had the exact same error with UART. It was pointing to RAM stick number five. The only thing that I was consistently doing was using 0.4 millimeter balls. Are they potentially too small where it's not actually making a proper connection? So as confirmed from that stream, I have tried three or four, I can't remember how many it is. I think it's three different RAM ICs for that specific number five bank. Now what I'm gonna do is take that bit of RAM off and I'm gonna measure every single pad to make sure 
that it's correct against the readings that I have. If any of those readings are incorrect, as confirmed in Discord, it's most probably going to be the APU on this PS5. I really hope that's not the case. I'm not going to take you through every single pad, but I think as an example, we have a diode reading here of 0.014, but this is VDD, which I think is correct. I'm testing right now on a donor board on the exact same uh, pin one, and it's around about the same 0.02, 0.019. And yeah, on this one, I get 0.1. 01516 that's not massively out of scope could be an issue but i'm not too sure this is the 1.8 rail i'm pretty sure and we get 0 0.18 here so that's fine so that's what i'm going to do right now is just go through all of these and confirm what i've got what i will say is that these two here are meant to be showing as a no connect from what i can tell but we seem to definitely get some sort of uh, diode reading here you know well, everything other than those no connects seems to be absolutely fine here, and I don't think the no connects are going to be an issue. I'm just going to measure these resistors here. We go into resistance mode. What do we get? 1.68k on that one, and this one, 1.66. Top right of your screen now is me measuring on a donor, so exactly the same, 1.6. And I'm just checking the other one, 1.6, okay. So those resistors are fine. This is the other side of the RAM slot, just to confirm. Uh, we don't have any liquid metal spillages or anything along those lines. It looks all okay to me. No burnt out components. Finally, just measure over on this side. Hopefully you also heard me confirm in the video if I've edited it properly, but this piece of RAM here was actually taken from a known working board, so I know the RAM stick itself is absolutely fine. So every single one, except for the ones that say NC, which stands for no contact, seem to be reading exactly as they are on the data sheet. So I still don't really know why it would be telling me specifically it's RAM number five. I'm gonna do something maybe a little bit silly. I'm gonna change the south bridge because if that is reporting incorrectly, because that's where we get the UART code from, maybe there is some sort of communication problem there coming from the south bridge itself. Just maybe, I don't know if that's true, but the other option is to replace every single stick of RAM. Plus the south bridge has already been changed and it might have been a faulty one, who knows? This being only 110 pounds, I knew it was going to make me work for the fix. Before I change out the South Bridge, I'm going to do something very stupid. I still have the RAM I see off. I'm going to attempt to boot the device and see what happens. Here we go. Okay, so we still get a blue light. Yeah, assuming it was going to turn off. All right, so I wonder what's going to happen with UART now. That could have been incredibly dumb. I might have damaged the board completely, but we learn. So I've just done UART again, and we have the exact same error, which is DDR6-5 damaged, and it's not even on the board. So my bet is actually faulty south bridge so let's continue with that the usual stuff 480 degrees celsius airflow speed 99 percent that looks a little bit worse for wear if i'm honest some really really dull joints there let's add some leaded yeah that solder looks very very dull there we go come at this very slowly very carefully same technique as always i'm moving the braid not the iron. There we go. Whilst the board is nice and warm. Make our job easy. I'm actually just going to compile some of that flux in the middle as well. Rotating the cotton swab as well. I think we're looking pretty good. Yeah, we are. That looks absolutely fine. Maybe I see, I think, two... Maybe there's a couple there with a little bit of solder on and a couple here. Got that. Got those two as well. Good. Tiny bit of IPA. Get that last bit off. There we go. No messing about. A little bit of flux. Cotton swab. Just around the area. Not too much here. Replacement south bridge that has been rebooled already. Make sure that's roughly in the right spot. That looks fine to me. We look at our donor here. That looks good. Temperature now is a little bit lower, 460 degrees Celsius. Same airflow speed. This isn't, this shouldn't, I say shouldn't, go anywhere. There we go. See it's into place? Perfect. Now we come in with the flux. And go for the reflow. Tap it from the left as well. Okay, going for the tap now. There it is, perfect. I'm gonna flush it out, give it a nice clean, and we'll give it another test. If this doesn't work, I will be retrieving my south bridge from this board and just potentially keeping it as a donor. Here we go. Three, two, the RAM chip is still off. I'm just gonna power it on and see if we get a different error message or anything. Oh, would help if I had the power in, wouldn't it? Three, two, one. Now it's completely dead. Now we have nothing. 
which is what we had before. I need to give that south bridge a reflow and just double check. All right, after a little bit of a reflow and a clean, what happens now? Okay, it turns on, the beep is back. Okay, but it, it, it turns off, understandably. That's fine. So we get the same error. I wonder if the UART code is gonna be different now that we swapped out the south bridge. Let's find out, I'm very nervous. DDR6, five damaged, which is exactly the same, so replacement required. But I also get this one which is known unknown 544. So I don't actually know if we're going to be able to fix it. Now, part of me is like, well, I've taken off that RAM now. I've replaced the South Bridge. So surely what I should do is put the RAM back on and just test my luck. I think I think maybe I do that. And then if that doesn't work, call it there because I spent a long time now on this PS5. A long story cut really short, I guess. It didn't work. And I just re-salvaged that piece of RAM, uh, that SSD controller and the south bridge i took it all off in a live stream because i didn't want to leave known working parts on the board after i tested it and it didn't work it said the exact same thing which was ddr6 number five still not working i did actually place it under a thermal cam and just here this chip was getting quite hot which i think is like a ram controller ic so i actually just straight up replaced this with one from a donor but still had the exact same issue so i am going to write this one off completely and just uh and potentially just use it for parts it's a bit too far gone now to actually resell it on ebay but at least again i get the power supply and other bits and bobs it's still not a bad price for 110 pounds so let's head on over to sally's spectacular spreadsheet we don't actually need to go over to the the actual calculator part for this do we straight over to the profits minus 110 pounds puts us now on a total of 357 pounds 50 pence as always appreciate your watching have a great rest of your day slash week slash weekend whatever it is for you i'll leave the last episode in this series just up here thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace